So the very first thing we want to do here is uh, make it so that we can put in our text. So remember, the text tag is pretty simple. You're just starting off with text, open uh, parentheses, and then I'm going to put in my name for my name tag. Typical. Now if I do that, and remember, there's two different buttons here. There's one for the preview, which you can do with the, if you hover, you can see it's F5. Um, or you can do the render one. The render one, I'll show you what it really is going to look like. And the text tool is a 2D tool. So when I click on that, you'll notice that it has really no thickness. Now, if you control click, you can move your center, center point or origin of everything. But when I render this out, it has no thickness. So if it has no thickness, it's not going to be 3D printable. So we need to next give it some thickness. And so you have to use the linear extrude. So you're basically linear, meaning it's in a straight line, and extrude, meaning you're pushing or pulling it out. Now, do I remember how to spell linear extrude? No. Or how it's phrased? Is it camel case? Is it uh, have an underscore? I don't remember. So this is where you always go back to that cheat sheet. If I jump to the cheat sheet and look around, you'll find that it's actually in the other category on the cheat sheet. Linear extrude and it gives you this kind of little sample to work from. I'm going to click on it and pick one of the examples that's already here. And this one here looks like a pretty cool one. I'm going to copy that one, jump back to my line. And since I don't need to remember the syntax for everything, I can just copy and paste these in. Now, when I do this, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a preview of it and like, whoa, is that what I want? Dude, no, I don't really want my name tag to be all twisty like that. So I realize what I end up copying here is that twist. Although maybe we can make it twisty. Let's see, would it make sense if it's there? Mm, not really what I had in mind for my name tag. So I'm going to take the twist tag out altogether and that extra little comma at the end. I do my quick render, and now I can see I've got my name just straight up. It's extruded, and it's centered, which means that, that, that this line right here is right down the middle of it. And I want to kind of line everything up just flat, because I'm going to be 3D printing this. So I'm going to take out the center one as well, and I still need a, you need a comma between these parameters. And now you can see I'm flat up against the top. And taking a quick look at my digital calipers and what I think my thickness I want to be for my name tag, I'm going to make it B5 tall. Now I think the convexity is has to do with how it renders when it's uh, in preview mode. You can actually choose not to have that in there. And when it does its full render, it'll look the same as when it does when, when it has the convexity. So I'm going to leave that one out for sake of simplicity. And I'm going to go ahead and put in my semicolon. Oh, I'm sorry. Do not, I'm putting in there, do not put in your semicolon. Uh, the linear extrude command, just like the translate command, which moves things around, that one you want to have uh, without a semicolon because it's changing, it's extruding whatever is after that in the statement. Or it's moving, whatever, if you're using translate, what's after that. And we'll see that again in a minute. So if I do that, I say render. There I've got a really simple thing. I could print this out if I just wanted loose letters. But I really kind of want to have something there to go across. So I'm going to make like a rectangle across it. And I could do this with a 2D tool. I could, could use the square and linear extrude that. But that's not the way I think about these things usually when I'm 3D modeling. I think about it as a, as a, rec, as a 3D object. So I'm going to use a cube and then I'm going to scale the cube. Do I remember how to do that? off the top of my head? No. Where am I going? To the cheat sheet. <laughs> so I quickly jump back to the cheat sheet and it doesn't want to load, but we'll go back to the one we had. Back a page, cube. So starting that page, here we see cube. So we also have the option uh, here to do a cube with a not just a size and center, which will make it a real true cube. I want to actually shape it into something else. So I'm going to scale it basically. So I'm going to use this second cube option. The examples they give me show me the cube size, whether it's true or false in the center, and x, y, z coordinates. So if I were to quickly grab one of them here, I can snag, say, this one. And it'll do that one and then do the scale for the different x, y, z's for it. I jump back. I'm going to copy and paste my cube in. Now, if I do this one, it's truly a cube, but I don't want it to be actually that big or this way. So I'm going to change my cube to be five, um, 
let's see. So remember, this is x, y, z. This is going to be x, comma, y, comma, z. So if we look down here really quickly, you see where it's showing the x, y, z coordinates? So that gives me an idea on which way I want it to go. I want my x to be really the longer value here because my name's longer than the other values, right? And so I'll make my x be 50 because I've got five letters in my name. And then I'll make my, if I make this one zero and try to render that one, guess what? If it's zero in any direction, it doesn't have any thickness. It's not going to be there. So you need to give it some sort of value for each of these. Uh, y, I'm going to say, I don't know, 20, or maybe too big. It'll probably be somebody's, I hear 10. But And the, the next one, I'll do 10 just to see what we're looking at here. So the last one is my up and down, my height. So I want that to be either 5 or less. And in this case, if I were going to try to cut that one out, I'd say 5 and do the render. And then I could subtract that one out. In this case, we're going to make the super, super, super simple one. I'm going to make it just be 3 and do a quick render. And I think this that 10 is probably your best bet. And you could even make it smaller than that. If you wanted a really kind of pokey one, you could, you could kind of make your, your name tag like that. Uh, and just place it in block. It's one way to actually connect a bunch of letters that would then otherwise fall apart, and you can make your name tag kind of rough. In my pocket, I think I would find this really annoying to have this kind of sticking out of my pocket uh, all the time. Let me see, I'll make it just a little bit lower down like that. But it could be a nice way to maybe use for something else you were trying to build. Now that's one way to go about doing it for that, and I could put in then cylinders at either end. Let me make it so that it fits onto the whole thing. So I'll do 10, because I think that one's going to fit. No, actually, I'll go to 15, so it's a little bit on either side. How's that look? Too much? Too little? Yeah, we'll try 15. And then I'm going to add in a cylinder then. Cylinder. And cylinder is one where you can look that one up, too. I make enough cylinders that I know that this one is. If you can go to your cheat sheet, that's fine. Uh, but cylinders are pretty simple. You're just looking for your height and your uh, radius. So you can actually pick uh, ones that are different shapes, but I want it to be just a straight up and down cylinder, so it's going to be pretty simple. I jump back. I'm going to say cylinder H for my height is going to be 5, because that's the height of uh, the, the text that I have going. Or I could make it 2, this, the height of the, the cube. And then my radius, no, well, that's going to be kind of the question, right? If I'm doing radius, it can be half of what I want this to be. Or, or I could say, well, let's make my radius 8. But if you're thinking in diameter, I think you can use diameter as well. Let's see. Close that up. Create one. Let's see. If I make it a diameter, it would be diameter of 16, right? Because it's going to be double. If I do that, is there any change? There's no change. So I could use diameter or radius for these two. Now, it's centering itself because it draws all those circles right from the middle. So I have a couple options here. I can start translating my stuff this way and move it negative if I want. Or I can move my cylinders up either way. Now, there's a second way I could kind of go about doing this one. There's another way I could go about doing this if I really wanted to. I could say I could use a command called hull. And rather than trying to line these guys all up, I could actually create a couple cylinders and put them at either end. In this case, I'm going to say, I'm going to make my two cylinders first. So I'm going to make another cylinder, but I'm going to move it. And because I'm lazy, like any good programmer, I'm going to copy, paste it, and I still need to do a translate. So translate is always a move, right? So I'm going to translate, and translate has that funky uh, format that if you don't remember, uh, look it up but it's a, it, it has to have the square braces to do its location for wherever it's going to move something. So I'm going to say in my x, I'm going to move it down to whatever the length is of that other piece. So I'm going to say 50, because that's in my x. My y, I'm going to just keep it the same. And my z, I don't want it to go flying anywhere. And this is another, one of the other cases where I do not put the, uh, I don't put the curly brace where I don't put a semicolon because it's going to move whatever is after it, the next command after it. When I do that and do a quick preview, you can see it's giving me a complaint because I forgot my other square brace. 
click that, pull it up, bam, I've got like my name on, looks like a car. It's not what I'm going for. <laughs> not yet. Now, as I was saying, there's kind of an option here I could do. I could kind of use a cool feature called hull if I wanted to. The hull would make it so that I don't have to use that cube and move it into the right space. I could actually uh, take that one out altogether and say hull, and then use open close like that. And anytime you do any kind of programming where you have things end up in curly braces, you should tab them in. So I'm going to highlight all of these and hit tab, which bumps them all in, and do that. When I do that, it's actually going to connect, and we've talked about this once really quick, it's going to connect those two circles, it's just going to hold them right together. And if I wanted to make it be an interesting shape or a different height, uh, this is really fun to play with. I could make it be shaped like that and make them be all kinds of different shapes. So I could easily hull uh, lots of different items. In this case, I'm going to keep them all the same. There, I've quickly hauled it, and next, I think I want to uh, just move my text. So I'm going to take that text that I've got and move it down. So I'm going to use that same thing. What do I use if I'm trying to move something? It's translate. I'm going to do the square, and I want to move it in the y-axis. So I'm saying I say 0 for x, and then y uh, minus 5, I guess. Let's, let's find out. I'm not putting the semicolon after it, but I continue to forget my square braces. Click, and now I've got my name tag kind of set up, more or less, if you can see it. So I could print this one out, but I still really kind of need a hole at one end. So in order to do that, I need to <coughs> subtract out something. And then the word we use for subtraction in, in OpenSCAD is difference. difference. Now, if you've forgotten how this one works, you can jump to your cheat sheet and look for your difference one. So this is actually going to be uh, in the Boolean operation. So it's either you're adding stuff together or subtracting things out or doing the intersection. If you need to look at it, you can see the couple different examples they have. And there's some really cool things you can do with it. But difference is definitely one of those ones where you need to use the curly braces. Jumping back just to put it in, you have difference with the open and close. And since this is inside curly braces, guess what? We're going to tab in everything that's in there. So I highlight it all, I hit tab. It's a nice way to keep your, your things all set up neatly. And you need to have a closing uh, curly brace at the end. Now, differences work like this. Differences work with you take whatever it is you're starting with and then you subtract out. So uh, the what you start with, uh, use this. Here, cut this. We'll say cut this. And then we'll come down here and we'll say with this. Now those are just comments, the computer's going to totally ignore those, but I, what I want to do is I'm taking this, this whole piece, this long piece that we have right here, and I'm going to cut something out. What do I want to cut out? I want to cut out a cylinder. So I'm going to grab one of the cylinders here. I think I'm going to take these two lines. Again, don't want to have to type any more than I have to. These all should be tabbed in the right amount, although it doesn't, the program doesn't really care, but it's easier to read. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change my diameter to 14, I think. Now when I do a quick rendering of that, you'll see that I've taken a new cylinder down here, and I've just cut that one out. Now the reason why it's doing that crazy like kind of disco light show is because the two shapes are at exactly the same plane. So they are touching each other exactly the same plane. When I re render this out with F6, it won't be a problem. I can actually do that and have it show up just fine. So there I've kind of created a really, really basic one. If I want to take this a little bit further, I can. If I want to make like the one that I was talking about the other day, I can make my cylinder a little bit bigger and then cut out a little bit of additional stuff. But this is a really quick, quick, basic one you can do in OpenSCAD.